Hang on, the Sweeney's here. We've got a Mark 1 Ford Granada M plate. Welcome to Lot 76 Cars. My name is Simon. Today we're at the Brooklyn's Easter Classic Gathering. There's already quite a few cars uh, lined up to get into the show, and a few here already, like these fabulous Jaguar XKs behind me. So uh, let's have a look round and uh, I'll take you on a tour. So, what a great couple of cars to start with. We've got an early ish. Jaguar XJS car was launched in 75. This looks like it's an 80. It's got the original GKN cast wheels on it, which some of you may recognize from the early cars. It's obviously very reminiscent of the car that was used in the Saint. It is the 5.3 litre as the early cars were, the 3.6 only coming later, and the pre high efficiency vehicles. But that is lovely. I think I may well have seen that car before at a Bista Scramble, but it's a great example, isn't it? So it's unusual to see one of these little Polo Coupes, but what's more unusual with this one, it's one of the rare G40s. So basically what that means, it's supercharged. I think it's something like a 1.3 litre supercharged engine, pumping out 115 brake horsepower. Well, let's face it, that's probably a bit more than the original Golf was, the Mark 1 Golf but you just don't see them at all. So these um, W124 chassis Mercs, this is the um, convertible. Um, I've been tipped by Quentin Wilson as ones to watch for the future in terms of classic. It's a late one. It's got the recessed grille, as you can see, but what a practical four seater they are. You've got you know quite a lot of room in the back here. Um, it's a quite a big car. That long deck is, is pretty, pretty big, isn't it? But what great usable four-seater convertible that is. So hot off the back of the Neu class, the car that saved BMW, the 1500, they introduced the smaller 1602 initially and then went on to be uh, to launch the 2002, uh, their small sports saloon. And probably this is the car that really defined BMW. Some of those features that were first seen on the um, uh, Neu class, that very strong um, center line that runs all the way around the car, those um, indicators. This particular car is an Italian market uh, car, um, or was certainly supplied to the Italian market, originally a German, and then supplied to the Italian market, exported. It's got some very unusual cast alloy wheels, apparently. Um, quite tiny by today's standard, aren't they? What are they, 165 80s, 13s, wow. So let's have a chat, without further ado, we'll have a chat with the uh, owner, Kerry, and find out how he came to get this absolutely stunning little sports car, or sports saloon, I should say, shouldn't I? So I'm here with Kerry, who's gonna tell us about this fabulous BMW 1602. So uh, left-hand drive car, this one, but, but tell us about the, the 1602 and maybe about this particular car, please. Um, yeah, well, the 1602 came, was designed mid-60s. Um, obviously, it was the first of the 02 series released, followed up by the probably more popular 2002. Um, this particular car is a was built in December 1971. Uh, built in Germany and exported immediately to Italy. Oh wow! Okay. So it was sold through an Italian dealer from New. Um, it's got a couple of Italian-only features on it. The alloy wheels are made by a company called FPS. They were only made for two years for BMW in Italy, so they're apparently quite rare. So, um, which is a nice little feature on it. Um, it's been it was restored in Italy um, about ten years ago. I'm led to oh, believe wow. by the previous owner. Um, quite a nice restoration. Went all the way through. All the interiors new, mechanically all gone through, was resprayed. I was going to say you wouldn't you wouldn't know, and the interior looks absolutely mint. So I'll cut in some shots of that guy so you can yeah. uh, you can uh, see that because it's what it's uh, four speed. It's a four speed, yeah, yeah. Uh, four speed sixteen hundred. Um, yeah, I say it's a nice little car. It's it's my second one of these. I've had I had one when I was about twenty, which was more than a few years ago. I had a two double O T. Um, is there a big difference having had both? I mean, obviously more power. There's but... a little bit more power, um, but they drive very, very similarly. This is slightly softer suspension um, right. than the 2002. That, um, 
uh, but uh, but yeah, no, it's it's very very similar car really. Um, that one I just bought because they were cheap at the time. Um, I know. Liked them, <laughs> liked them ever since. Yeah, they, they were, you know, one, literally they were they were just all the just used cars, weren't they? Yeah, to, to the last people. one unfortunately died of terminal rust. Um, but uh, you know what? Now you would have fixed and thought nothing of it. But back then it was enough to. And this one, having lived in Italy, has had a this had one, a has, has, I think, had a fairly easy life. It was imported um, about four years ago. Um, it uh, spent a little bit of time in the West Country with the first import okay. owner, um, an Italian family. They bought it over from Italy. Um, and uh, I picked it up at Bonham's Auctions last year. Okay, um, cool. Yeah, just by chance. Wasn't really looking for one. It just came <laughs> That's how it happens, isn't it? Yeah. Right place, right time. And it was the right money. And so here we are. Excellent. Um, and Any big, big jobs or road trips planned with it this year? Um, or you... Just lots of local shows, really, like this one. I mean, I'm only... 10 miles away so it's okay, a, a, an easy local one for me um but yeah no as i say it'll just be a succession of local shows. i mean but it does get used it's um you know it, it does the trip, trip to sainsbury's and yeah great runs great around to... and yeah it gets used two or three times a week at least so, fabulous yeah. well thank you for telling us about it kevin thanks Absolute very much pleasure. Nice cheers, to meet thank you. You. cheers so we seem to have a bit of a bmw theme running today and this is lovely isn't it it's an e24 series uh, 635 CSI Coupe Sport Injection, I think. Um, these were introduced in 77 and actually built on behalf of BMW by Carmen. Got that typical shark nose styling of the period which carried forward to quite a few of their cars. This particular car is for sale actually. It's got a, a single owner for the last um, 20 years and impeccably maintained and it's a beauty, isn't it? It's a good job I've not got my checkbook with me today because that one will be extremely tempting. So this Alpha from, a, what I think it's an X-plated car by the look of it. I don't think that can be the original plate, surely. Um, but it's a right-hand drive car, so the only possibility is maybe it's, it's South African. Maybe it is a, a British car, but it's in beautiful condition, isn't it? Alpha really knew how to make great handling, great driving cars didn't quite master the old rust protection perhaps but that's probably well documented a lot of myths about cheap russian steel and so on but anyway this one has survived extremely well and this pretty sprint veloci 1.5 is a real beauty isn't it i'd certainly i'd take that one home today so this is quite an unusual mix of brands. It's two companies maybe you didn't know worked together, AC and Bristol. So AC built the car, but Bristol supplied the engine. Now the ironic thing is with the engine, is the engine itself is a BMW design, I believe, that uh, Bristol used from BMW after the war. Now whether they just had the rights to it, or they manufactured themselves, I'm not quite sure. So I put that in the comments, but it's, um, it's a very distinctive looking car, got hints of, uh, Aston about it at the back end. Look at the fins on it. It's a really, really attractive car anyway. Yeah, it's got a sort of DB5, what, DB6 look to it as well. That looks super, doesn't it? So do you know what this one is? Well, I'll be honest, I didn't, and I've just had to ask. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll fess up here and now. It's a Gaz Volga from 1962. 2.4 litre petrol engine obviously it's an export model and it was uh, made for well as you can see obviously um, being left hand drive made maybe for one of the Baltic markets perhaps what an incredible car it's time I guess styling from or more or less from the late 50s really I've never seen another one of those for sure and uh, probably never see another one again some great stuff. Look at those um, rear arches that uh, bubble out and those uh, door handles. It's, it's made of really stern metal. Uh, the owner was encouraging somebody to uh, slam the boot to shut it. There you go. Just on cue. What a great car. So this is a brilliant conversion of an Audi A2 from a normal five door small hatchback and this particular one has been converted to a pickup and it hasn't been done in half measures it's a really properly usable pickup with a tailgate and it looks like a very special leather interior wow now i'm definitely sure i won't be seeing one more of those today so we've got a ford console capri now this car had a very short life 
and I think it was pretty much replaced by the Cortina in four-door form. I think the coupe continued a bit longer. This one looks like it's come out of a long restoration and it looks absolutely lovely, doesn't it? This sort of old English white, I'm sure it isn't called that, but typical of period and also reminiscent of the Anglia. Look at that rear screen, the angle on that one, how it actually, uh, it's, uh, angled completely the opposite way to what you would expect. Incredible, isn't it? So the E23 BMW, the first generation 7 Series, replaced the old E3 sedan and ran from 77. This looks to be a relatively late car. What, 82 on a wide plate? Got the original Cooper Thames Ditton plates on it. It's lovely in that gold, isn't it? Why can't you get a gold car so much these days? It's got absolutely obsessed by these tiny 14 inch wheels um got like an alpina stripe on the side i'm um, probably not maybe uh factory sunroof oh it's gorgeous inside unfortunately it's not open that car but um isn't that an absolute beauty i like that one i really like that one so cortina mark 5 in tuscan beige i've got my anorak on and it's got the spot lamps and it's a GL. That looks lovely, doesn't it? And next to it, we've got a, a Moggy Miner. Moggy Miner 1000. Lovely to see that. Love those hoods over the lights. They look great, don't they? Absolutely lovely. So this is lovely, isn't it? From the, the real heyday of Fords in the 50s, this beautiful Zephyr 6. Quite patinated there. Is that... Look at the um, mirrors. Mirrors were an accessory and people would attach them there or sometimes lower down there he's got the opening quarter lights the bench seat and of course the column gear change if you wanted a floor gear change quite often it was sometimes an option if available at all but that is a glorious car isn't it really of its time great to see that here today and, and glad that people are using cars like this because keeping these on the road must be uh, must be a reasonable challenge these days. So this is a Healy. No, it's not an Austin Healy. It's actually one of Donald Healy's own models that he produced independently with a Riley engine. It's a Tickford one. It's got the two and a half litre Riley engine in the car. Um, really, uh, really lovely condition, this one. I mean, this is from 1952. I mean, that's just incredible, isn't it? That it's still in, uh, in active use. And I say, uh, quite often people uh, assume that uh, Donald Healy was forever associated with Austin, which he was, and also then with Jensen, but this was uh, under his own brand. So the W116 Mercedes S-Class, or S standing for Sonder or Special Class, arrived in 72. This looks like to be a 1980 car. Some interesting features, as you'll see, it's got those um, overlapping wiper blades, which are really unusual. And obviously the other feature it's got with many Mercedes of the period is these um, rear lamps that are supposedly to um, keep the lights clear in, in, in dirty or inclement weather. Those double, um, double bumper bars, it's, it's pretty well protected there. It's an absolutely lovely car that one, isn't it? What a beauty. It is a special car. And yet again, we bump into that rare 1984 diesel Toyota Camry. Wow. So Mazda persevered with the rotary engine for quite a long time and this one dates back to 1980. It's a Mazda RX-7. I think the actual capacity is only something like about measured at 1.3 or some 1.2 or 1.3 but clearly um, measured in a way that uh, a normal um, engine would be but uh, a lot of these didn't survive because of the complexity of the Wankel engine but thankfully this one has and doesn't it look lovely it's reminiscent a little bit of the Porsche 944 a bit of the period influenced by that I think so here we've got one of the famed bread van polos do you remember these really useful little cars I once drove one of these ones but as I recall they didn't have a brake servo and it scared the bejesus out of me because I couldn't stop it so uh, I'm sure that's, uh, I didn't make that up, but great to see that here today as well. Unusual. So fire up the Quattro, uh, they said in ashes to ashes. Well, you'd love to fire this one up. This one's for sale 
at a snip under £43,000 and I want it. It looks like it's a later car. I'm just looking at the styling treatment at the front. D, what would that make it? 86. But the condition is lovely. Oh, look at those, look at those aftermarket Pioneer speakers in the back window. They were all the rage at one time having those, weren't they? Excellent. So Curry Motors were always proclaiming the nice people to do business with and their answer phones I remember back in the day and I'm sure they were and this is the top of the tree it's the Cortina 1600E I think it had some GT parts on this wood door cappings this one is in this lovely sort of um, I don't know dark blue purpley shade I really like these there's something really special about these at the 1600E So what have we here? We've got a Montego fleet favourite of um, Austin Rover and then later Rover Group badge. This is, I think, probably a Rover car looking at the uh, trim on it, that lower side trim. And it's a Mayfair, so it's reasonably well equipped. They use the Mayfair brand um, within a number of the vehicles within the range. That's a rare one, isn't it? So I learned to drive in a K10 Micra many moons ago and it made quite an impression on me, but not one like this one. It's a Micra, it may be a March if it's the um, Japanese version, but this one's got a turbocharged lump. I'm not sure if it's a, a Japanese import or not. It's right hand drive, the interior looks to be pretty standard, but it's got some kind of turbo lump. If this is your car or you know about it, then feel free just to drop us a comment because uh, I really like the look of that one. I must admit, I bet it goes a bit, they were never that heavy anyway. So the Maserati Indy ran from the late 60s, I think 69, to the mid 70s and holds the record in fact of being the first car produced under the ownership of Citroen. Yes, Citroen owned Maserati for a period, hence uh, some parts on the SM came from Maseratis. Um, this one's a beauty isn't it from its pop-up lights it's a full proper four-seater but it's a pretty four-seater unlike some of the later four-seaters in the 70s from some of the manufacturers um, this is a four-seater Grand Tour that's got the space but it's actually got the style I love that um, hatch I don't think that that's necessarily a fully opening hatch I might be wrong but some of these opened for for ventilation and uh, massive massive glass area isn't it that's a striking looking car, isn't it? So this 1967 L319 Mercedes panel van was restored, painstakingly restored by the owner. And I'll try and cut in some of the pictures I've got. Um, it was originally from Portugal and it uses the OM engine. I forget which OM engine it is and I'll try and cut that in if, I've, uh, if I remember. And it's been converted to a day van in the back but subtly done and honestly the level of work it's had to get it to uh, this standard is absolutely incredible that flat front Mercedes front probably that's a better shot of it actually isn't it you can probably see from this side if I uh, don't trip over myself walking backwards is how it looks from the side well wow, incredible so it's not unknown at these events to see the saloon version of the Zephyr, but this is the more unusual estate. And I think it was Abbot of Farnham with a coach builder. Quite often, the estates of this era were not um, something that manufacturers offered. They relied on conversion companies to um, offer an estate version. And this happened with a number of brands, and not least of all, Ford. And this is the, uh, this is the version of the Zephyr. A very useful estate car it is too so this is king of the micro cars it's a real k car it's a honda s600 and isn't it diminutive it's a tiny little thing it must be smaller than a smart car wow i think i might have seen one of this at bromley Paget in the past but i'm glad to see these again they are uh, well they're, they're hen's teeth rare so the triumph motor company persisted with a body on frame construction but what that enabled them to do is to effectively sell the floor panel the chassis of that um, vehicle to other manufacturers in this case bond who were based in preston and ran as a separate car company you've probably heard of the bond bug but they eventually um, were bought by reliant and this sort of thing uh, 
ceased production and I think they concentrated on the Bond bug, the little orange uh, wedgie bug. But this is the Triumph Vitesse, so sort of Herald Vitesse base with a two litre engine. Customers told me where permissible it'll do, a, it'll do over a ton. So uh, interesting wedge profile it's got there. Still a boot and you just don't see too many of those at all. Apparently they were sold officially through um, Triumph dealerships back in the day as well. I have a huge amount of time for these and these are Jensen 541. So it was built with using the, I think the four litre Austin engine. Um, if you look at that grill at the front. So here we can see the grill actually being opened or closed. That's fabulous, isn't it? What a great idea. Um, it's actually got side windows and the rear windows were made out of perspex so again really unusual and it was quite an innovative material back in the day so you probably won't see it so much better but that's perspex as well now to me these are really really pretty cars um, i came to a jensen event here you'll probably see the video a couple, couple of years back when they were celebrating the anniversary but the 541 was uh, really before its day in terms of being a supercar that's lovely you want entry level motoring, Mini Mayfair too luxurious for what you need is a Mini City. Now I think they still had the 1000cc engine rather than the 850cc of the uh, um, earlier cars. And it's in great nick, it's got that checked upholstery, it's got a speedo, it's got that manual choke. Oh it's even got a radio, it's really posh this one isn't it? Great. Brilliant. So this TR7 is badged as TR7 Sprint. Now I believe what they did with the Sprint is put the Dolomite 16 valve engine in, a very short production run of cars. Now if that's right, this would make this an extremely rare car. Don't think the owner's around to ask, but that was the Sprint. Well, it's got Sprint uh, decals all over it, and that would make it probably uh, a very, very rare TR7. So it's always good to see a BMW um, E28, but this one's a special one. It's one of a relatively limited number. I think somebody just told me 167, because it's an E28 M5. I'm not sure how well it shows in the pictures, but it's like a lovely oak green metallic color. It was owned by this particular owner, has owned it twice. He owned it once, had to sell it, and then bought it back. And it is an absolute beauty. That is probably one of my favorite cars today, I think. I'm not sure how well the paintwork pops on um, on camera, but he certainly looks good in real life. A Mitsubishi Lancer from 1979. This is Festival of the Unexceptional Territory we're in today. So Mitsubishi arrived, I think in 76 or 77 importing cars under the Colt Car Company. The name uh, Mitsubishi was uh, felt to be a bit too revolutionary for the buying public to take at the time and this must be one of the first cars they uh, they brought into the UK if it's an original UK car and it really truly is a survivor it is uh, well it looks like it's got the original dealer plate who proclaimed that they're a cult agent in Wales oh yeah that's made my day seeing that one guys that is an absolute beauty isn't it and rare so we've seen Zephyrs before on the channel, we've seen the saloons, we've even seen earlier on elsewhere in the video an estate, a Farnham estate. But guess what guys, this is a 1959 pickup. And the bodies were apparently built in South Africa, well that would make sense, right and drive as well. And they were assembled together with the engine for the Australian market, so if there are any Aussies watching and you've got more information about this then please feel free to let us know. It's a beautiful beautiful condition it's a stunner and the owners just told me that in actual fact it is for sale so I'll just do a close-up on that there and you can see the number so if you are thinking of buying one of probably one or two of these in the UK then uh, give Rod the owner a shout because he'd be pleased to hear from you so we, we seem to be uh, producing quite a bit of content for pickup fans today. This is a UK car this time, and it's an Austin Cambridge pickup. And it's in lovely condition, owned by, wait for it, Arthur Negus. So bonus points if you know who he was. 
Okay, he was from Antiques Roadshow, so there's quite a lot of load space there in the back. We uh, had a chat with the owner. We're just going to take a look in the cabin of this car. Well, why not? It's in beautiful order. I mean, how many pickups survived? Look at that. That brilliant sort of uh, half moon speedo. Well, it's quite hot in there. That's lovely, isn't it? Door cards with uh, minimal door furniture on there. That's a beauty, isn't it? What a beauty. Well, this is an absolute Bobby Dazzler. It's a 1978 Mitsubishi Kamazin. And isn't it a beauty? Got a great registration plate. You see the registration plate on there? KGB 638T. So I wonder if it's got a license to kill. Don't really know, but it just looks great. I mean, I don't know if it picks up on camera, but look at that wedge profile there. That could be a danger to pedestrians. That is absolutely glorious, isn't it? Well, there's a few nice Maseratis, which bodes well for the Italian day later on in the year. And that one is great. Look at the exhaust pipes, like scaffolding. So this lovely Rover P4 100, so just over 100 horsepower, has been subtly lowered. You wouldn't necessarily know it initially. Um, and it's also got these very interesting wheel arch spats here. They look like a period accessory, and they're not the owners actually added them. I mean, they've done a great job. Lovely inside. What a sense of occasion. So plenty of room in, in, in the back. We've got a bench seat in the front, I guess. And we've even got, we've got a floor change rather than a column gear change. Oh, it looks an absolute Bobby Dazzler, this one, doesn't it? So we'll get that some shots of that from the back without trying to uh, there's a river behind me here so if i disappear suddenly on the video you know what's happened so comma would eventually or certainly at some stage in history be part of the roots group but look at this lovely little van and it's got some great features look at the air conditioning on full i.e front window opens that's that's great isn't it um it's ready for work with its ladders on the roof Well, somebody has done an immense job at either restoring or building that, or it's been a, it's been a hell of a survivor. Now, often these can be mistaken for other cars of the period, thinking of the uh, Cambridge and Farina series, and there's a reason for that. This Peugeot 404 was also styled by, styled by Piddings Farina, so you see some similarities with Fiat's of the period as well. But if you look at that profile that uh, from the front, and certainly those um, fins at the back. It's an absolutely lovely car, isn't it? We'll see if we can take a look inside that one as well. So the owner's um, gonna let me have a look inside. I've never had a look in a Peugeot 404. Lovely door cards. It's in beautiful condition, isn't it? Reminds me of my dad's old 504 in some ways. I guess that's probably the horn ring in the steering wheel. It's a uh, floor change. So for once, I'm totally stumped. I know it's a Nova kit car. I don't know what it's based on, but what I do know, it's got that fabulous clamshell that lifts up to expose the whole passenger compartment there. I wish I knew a bit more about this. So if you're the owner of this or you know a bit more about that particular car, feel free to let me know. Looks like it's got some sort of space frame underpinning it. And that's about it. I'm struggling to uh, to tell you very more about that one. All I know, it's a very, very, very striking looking vehicle, isn't it? You'd certainly stand out in that one, wouldn't you? So this is a really striking colour scheme of this MGB anniversary built in 1975. I think celebrating the 50th year of anniversary at that stage. Yeah, I think that's pretty, that's correct. And it's a great colour scheme, isn't it? I think those wheels were used on the V8s. It's the Golden Jubilee edition. It helpfully says on the car and you know what I really like that you'll recall probably in one of our videos from last year at the um, Lancaster classic show that uh, we actually showed you a one-off midget um, that was made in the same color scheme so check that one out if you're not seeing it but that's uh, that's a really striking looking car isn't it well not everybody's a fan but I must admit they like a wedgie and here's an Austin princess uh, with its um, didn't get the hatchback until later in life till the ambassador arrived which is uh, probably a huge mistake on behalf of BL I don't think they wanted it to compete with the Maxi that's a lovely color isn't it what a beautiful car well it's in beautiful condition anyway a very usable Lancia Beta HPE 2000 IE 
Well, so it says, um, this will be a later car because I think it's got that facelift on the grille. Um, some people are more Lancia experts than I am. The one thing I can appreciate, it is a very usable, practical four-seater vehicle with a, um, a hatch and it's quite a good looking one at that as well, isn't it? Now, here's a scrappy survivor, if, if ever there is one. It's a Mazda 626. Four-wheel steering as well. Back in the day, that was something else. Never really caught on four-wheel steering, did it? But this one's in absolutely lovely order, isn't it? What a true, true survivor. Oh, this is lovely, isn't it? It's a BMW E12 5 Series. And somebody's put, like, they've, they've got wheels that seem to look like the ones on the BMW uh, M1. Um, I'm, I'm sure they're not, but uh, it's a W, so what did that make it? 1980, that traditional Hofmeister kit got a lovely, lovely um, sort of willow green metallic. Oh, that is, that might be another favorite for mine from today. That is an absolute, don't these five series, this generation E12s and E28 just look right. They just look well proportioned. They're not particularly big cars. This one's a right hand drive car, so it looks like it's a UK car and isn't it a Bobby Dazzler? Wow. So whilst the 7 Series Volvo 740, 760 Series is credited with saving the company, they did continue to produce the 244. And the 244 uh, Series 2 four-cylinder four-door evolved into the 240 Series a bit later in life. It's got the facelift front grille and the altered bonnet. And it's in case you didn't know it's a 240, they've helpfully got the stripes. I reckon those were probably a Volvo option back in the day as well. They'd offer stripes to the bumpers. They'd sell you anything, Volvo. And there you go. A lot of uh, fond family uh, memories uh, with one of those, I think. So this is a Lancia Flaminia, apparently named after the road that led from, I think, Rome to Rimini. There you go, that's a bit of trivia for you. Um, it's a beautiful car that replaced the Aurelia. You can see that it was, it, without even looking closely, and there's a Pininfarina badge on the style, you can see it's Pininfarina influenced. Look how it, it's got some similarities with the Farina, the BMC Farina. Um, cars of the period oh have you seen a hugely different class this one what a very very pretty car elegant i would say and um, probably take a look inside because helpfully somebody's left the window open and you can see it's got that beautiful wood finish inside red leather it is a full four seater and it's even got uh, seat belts well at least in the front anyway isn't that a stunner this is from the days when Lancia was an independent company and before the days that Fiat actually took ownership of the organization. And didn't they produce some outstanding cars? So thanks once again for joining me at the Easter Classic gathering at the Brooklands Museum. It's been a great event. I hope you've enjoyed the cars we've seen and the owners we've met today. And uh, please like, share, subscribe. And as always, once again, thank you for watching.